Hey coders and welcome to episode 3 of our Pandas playlist. We're going to be continuing our journey through the Pandas package in this episode by learning how to filter our data. So in this video we're just going to take a surface level view at all of the different filter methods and operators for filtering um, just because there are quite a few of them in totality and they won't have enough time to go through every single one of them but I think just learning about these a uh, few basic ones uh, it will give you a good head start to branch off on your own to learn about some of the more complicated ones. Uh, so again in this video we'll learn some of the more uh, I guess basic operators which are such as the double equal sign, the and sign, uh, the pipe, and the tilde. And then we're also going to learn again some basic uh, methods such as in it or is in uh, string dot contains and also string dot length. So let's dive into the code right now so that we can take a look at these methods. Okay, we're here in our Jupyter Lab notebook and let's start out as always by importing pandas as PD. After we have imported it, then let's take a look at our data frame, which we'll be using today. Again, this is the same data frame that I have been using, or the same uh, data that I have been using throughout the playlist so far. Uh, if we have a look at that, again, we have our data frame right here displayed for us nice and cleanly. All of these rows are students, and we have data on a specific uh, standardized test that they took and also some other metadata or, or, or fields that we have on that student. Cool, so that is our data frame. So, so how far we have looked at just getting a certain um, column or you know a specific column or maybe like a subset of rows, but let's say that we wanted to get a little bit more specific on which rows we wanted to get, right? Let's say that we wanted to say only get the rows where the gender was equal to male. So that would be called a filter. All right, so how can we access those rows or get that subset of data uh, where gender is equal to male? Well, we're going to have to create a filter. All right, so just like how you can pass in column names or row positions into bracket notation, uh, such as this, right? We learned this in the last episode where if you wanted to get a uh, the column or get the data for the column math score, you would just say DF and then pass in math score in between square brackets. Uh, similarly, if you wanted to get rows uh, 5 through 30, you could just say DF and then in square brackets use 5 colon 30. Uh, you can also, in between these square brackets, pass in a filter. So a filter is basically... Um, is where you're defining, okay, so I want the column name gender from this data frame, and I'm going to want to at or I want to uh, have all of those cells or all of those uh, rows that are equal to male. So let me first show you what that looks like if we were just to get the filter and display uh, this filter. So let me type in filt, and now if I run this, then what that's going to do is it's actually going to, again, get this series object right here, right? The gender column right here. And then it's going to look at every single piece of data in that series object and then make this comparison right here. Does that equal male? And then it's just going to return for us uh, that Boolean, whether uh, it's true or false. So it looks like the first three pieces of data that we have are all females. And then three and four, or index three and index four are males, right? Because it was equal to male. If we come up here, it looks like that is confirmed right there. So what this kind of acts like, this um, series of Booleans, what this kind of acts le like is a filter mask, right? And we can actually pass in this series of Booleans to our data frame. And then when we do, something pretty cool happens uh, it filters out our data frame. So now if we pass that filter into our data frame, then we only are or we only returned those rows where uh, gender is equal to male. And as you, we could do a, a quick spot check right here, uh, that seems to be the case. But let me just uh, throw in um, another method. So again, I'm going to be accessing the gender column. And 
Uh, we haven't learned this yet, but I'm just going to say unique, unique, oops, I knew I was spelling that wrong, unique. All right, so this is a method we, have, we haven't learned yet, but basically what this is going to do is get all of the unique values of this column under this filter, right? And as we can see, uh, there's only one uh, there's only one unique piece of data, and that is male, which is basically what our filter is uh, filtering for. So that uh, checks out for us. All right, cool. So that is how you can uh, get uh, a subset of rows with a filter. Um, we can also pass our filter into .loc, but we cannot fill, uh, pass this into .iloc, right? So uh, passing a filter uh, filter mask through dot loc actually provides more fu uh, flexibility uh, because we can now also specify the columns that we want to access, right? If we were to just pass this filter object into a data frame and then say that we wanted, uh, I don't know, the student ID, then this is not going to work, right? We're going to get a type error. We can only pass in a filter object or again, like the columns or the rows that we want, right? However, if we wanted to filter out our rows, but only spe only uh, after that um, get certain columns, we could definitely just pass in those columns just like this. Um, we know where we get math, reading and writing, you know, after we get that data frame right here, um, but what we can also do all in one foul swoop is we can just say dot loc. So first let me just um, pass in dot loc and then pass in that filter through dot loc just to confirm that's working. All right, cool, so it's working. Um, so now as, a, as the second um, uh, argument right here, we can actually pass in our column names that we want, right? Just how dot loc would do it normally if we were to pass in the rows that we wanted right here and then also the columns right here. Uh, we can, again, pass in a filter mask now, and then the columns that we want. So let me paste that list in. And if we run this, then now we get all of the um, rows that have a male as the gender, but now we're specifying that we only want these columns returned, and that's exactly what we get. We get gender, math score, reading score, and writing score. Cool, so that is how to make a filter. Um, so technically you don't, again, you don't really need to declare your filter outside um, outside the accessing of that data frame, right? You could definitely just say, all right, I'm going to take this and just put it directly in there. Um, and if I run that, that's definitely going to work. However, I like to declare my filter outside of the accessing or the bracket notation um, syntax just because this can get a little bit confusing on the eyes. It's like a DF opening bracket and then another DF and then another opening opening bracket and uh, sometimes it can get a little confusing. Uh, so I like to um, uh, keep that separated just because that's a little bit easier on the eyes. Cool. So let's move on. So there are some common filter operators, right, that we just need to know. So um, double equal sign, like that's a Python uh, operator. That's You probably already know how that works. That is equal to. However, we do have some other operators that we need to know that are like pandas specific. So that is the and, the single um, ampersand, which is a bitwise and, um, but that is used as the and uh, operator. We also have pipe, which is known as the or operator, and then we have a tilde, which is the not operator. So let's go through these one by one really quickly. Cool, so if we wanted to say get all of the rows where the gender was equal to male and the race ethnicity was equal to Asian American, then we would just surround these two filters uh, in parentheses, right, so that the so that the order of operations reads this correctly, and then we would put a single ampersand in, right? Uh, so that's Panda's way of saying and. So if I run this, then here we go. It looks like we get returned for us a data frame. It's only 139 rows, uh, but it does look like, yep, the gender is all male, and then the race ethnicity is all Asian American. Cool, so this is just the data uh, for male Asian Americans. Cool, so um, that is and, and then uh, the pipe, 
works similarly. And that is for or. So if we just run this really quickly, uh, I'm sure you can imagine what this is going to return. So again, this is the math score is greater than or equal to 85 or the reading score is just greater than 80. So like for this first row right here, we can see that their math score was uh, 69, uh, which is less than 85. However, their reading score was 90, which is greater than 80. So this was included in the, um, the return value. Cool, so that is how you would specify an OR operation. Let me now do this last one. So this tilde right here is, is to specify not. So again, in Python, you would usually just say not this, right? However, in pandas, whenever you want to specify not, you will use a tilde at the beginning of, of whatever operator or whatever filter you are negating. Cool, so this, uh, without the tilde, this would just say, all right, go get me all of the um, records or all of the rows where the parental level of education is equal to high school. However, since we're negating that, we're getting actually the opposite of that. So if I run this, then there we go. It looks like now our parental level of education, none of these include high school anymore. And again, we can uh, just verify that that is the case by saying something like parental level of education and then getting all of the unique values. And there we go, we can see that high school is not listed as a unique value in this uh, column right here, parental level of education. Cool, then let's move on to those more complicated filter expressions. So sometimes uh, uh, just the equal, double equal sign, the and, um, you know, the greater than, sometimes those won't cut it. Uh, and especially so when you have, say, string data, right? Uh, so first off, let's look at this method right here, is in. So is in is whenever you want to check to see if a certain value um, of a of a of a uh, column is in within a certain list, right? So uh, what this first uh, filter is doing is saying, all right, go get me all of the values, give me the column parental level of education. And then if one of the, and if, if those values, if each value that it inspects is in this list, then include it in the filter, right? So let me just run that. Let me actually comment these out for now. And let me run this. Cool. So if we look now at our parental level of education, um, we can see that all of these we get bachelor degree, some college, associate's degree, all of these are included within this list. So again, this is um, similar, I would say, to what we did up here where we said is equal to high school. But now if we wanted to say, all right, equal to uh, bachelor degree or you know associate degree or um, some college, then uh, we can use that, we can use this method is in. Cool, all right, let's keep moving on. All right, so these next two methods are uh, string methods as, as, as they are called in pandas. Uh, so we're actually going to be going over uh, these string methods a little bit more closely in a future episode just because they are uh, pretty pivotal, I would say. Um, but for now, just know that whenever you call like a, a, um, a, a series, right? Whenever you get like a column and you get a series, uh, you can, if that series is all string, like the data type is all string, then what you can do is you can start running these uh, string methods. There's these special string methods that you can call on that series object. So what to call them, you first have to specify dot string. Then after that, you can specify um, a whole bunch of methods. But uh, let's first look at contains. So this, what this is doing is it's going to get us the lunch column. And now we're going to uh, see that, yep, this is a data type of string. So we're going to run a string method on it. And the string method that we want to run on it is dot contains. This dot contains method basically just looks at the string and it, it's going to see if uh, this substring is within that string, right? Is within the total string. So uh, we're basically looking to see, all right, are these values uh, is free in that value. So if I run this, 
then it looks like now we only get the lunches where a free is in the uh, value itself, right? So that is contains. The next one is uh, length. So this one is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically just going to get the length of the string. And this, what this filter is doing is it is going to see if that length of that string is greater than 10, right? If it's greater than 10 characters. So it looks like we're getting the telephone uh, column. So you might think that this is, okay, a, a data type of integer, but as you can see, we have some oddballs right here. Uh, so that basically makes this a actually a string column. All of these are actually strings. These numbers are actually strings because we have some um, weird telephones right here. So if we wanted to actually inspect those weird telephone data entries, then what we can do is we could say, all right, give me the length of that value. And if it's greater than 10, then include it in the filter. Let's run that now. All right, so there we go. It looks like, again, these telephones have lengths greater than 10 characters. And as we can see, yep, there are some additional characters such as parentheses, some hyphens, uh, and some uh, spaces. So that is a quick introduction to filtering data. Uh, in pandas. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them down below in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer them. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the very next episode.